21. Mariah's Diary. Sharia doesn't just like Kasturi, he's in love with her. The smile that graces his face when he reveals what he knows of her likes and dislikes is the brightest I have seen. This smile, unlike the ones I've seen before, isn't forced. Everything she has ever confided in him has never been forgotten, and watching that unfold today made even me smile. I have forgotten this intimate and softer side of love, the excitement to hear someone speak the language of your soul in such a loving tone was something I enjoyed most. Like Sharia said, it would be a sin not to remember the things that make you happy. He's right. When you find love, all that matters anymore is making the other person happy. Seeing Kasturi and Sharia, I question all the suspicions I have that are caused by my own past. Is this love? Is it always this simple? I can't, I don't know. I don't know if I can accept that as an answer or even as part of it just yet. My heart still bleeds. 22. Sharia. Maria's voice startled me as I came down the stairs. Sharia, can you please do me a favor? Sure, I said. What is it? I need to get some materials for the work here. It's at a complete standstill until I do. She looked over her shoulder towards Kasturi's house, flustered. No one else is home, not even uncle or auntie, and Kasturi is in college. You think you can take me to a shop nearby? If you're free, that is. Or at least, give me some directions. It's fine, I said, descending the stairs, giving her a reassuring expression. I'm free at the moment and I have plenty of time before my classes start. Let's go. Thank you so much, hold on, she said, motioning for me to wait. I need to grab my sketchbook. She dove back through the door, and after a few minutes came out with a few papers, sketchbook, and a pencil in hand. Locking the door, juggling her things, she joined me on the front pathway. I raised an eyebrow at the haphazard pile in her hands. I'm so sorry, she breathed. I didn't want to keep you waiting, so I just grabbed what I needed. Sorry. It's all right, I chuckled. You can keep it in my bag. I slid it off my shoulder and unzipped it for her. Thank you. No problem. She slid them in the bag and I closed it. It's fine. Keeping them in my bag frees up your hands and you won't lose them. Definitely. She nodded and rubbed her cheek. I need some hanging materials for pictures and wall decor. Besides that, I want to see if I can. Find things to fill some gaps in Auntie's room. It still looks and feels so incomplete to me. I looked over at her from the corner of my eyes. How are things back home with you so far away? They are all doing well. She followed my lead as we made our way through the streets. You've been here in Jaipur for a while now. I barely know anything about you, Mariah. I could see her face reddening, both of us remembering how she had pried my hidden information from me back on the terrace. A cunning smile crept across my lips. Tell me about yourself, your friends, even your boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. The twist in her lips told me the question irritated her. There was a moment of silence. The atmosphere between us shifted, but my gut told me it wasn't from my question. I wondered if she had felt this drive for answers with me as I did now with her. I'm sorry. It was the first thing I could think of to say, though it felt misplaced as it fell from my mouth. No, I was... She trailed off, as if nervous the next half would reveal her own secrets. I was actually thinking about the materials. Sorry. Right? I knew it was a lie. So, you went to college to be an interior decorator? Yes. A smile came back to her face. It was something I had always wanted to do. A lot of the family thought it was a bad idea, but I'm a rather stubborn creature at times. I chased after it, and I can say it was well worth it. Wow. 
I marveled over the idea of it. You're a brave person, Mariah. I couldn't imagine standing up against my family like that and doing it alone. I wasn't alone, the... Again, a pause in her words and then a shift in conversation. Remind me I need materials to hang that huge picture in Kasturi's room. Furrowing my brow, I saw that her eyes seemed to have glazed over. I knew that look well. I wore it on my face when visiting my own painful memories. She was avoiding saying something, but out of respect, I suppressed the urge to ask any further questions. The shop was not much further, ending the awkward silence. Together we picked out some items I was sure Kasturi would like, and we gathered the missing materials. It was amazing to see Mariah brighten, even glow, as she buzzed around the shop. She pulled the sketches from my bag, writing some things down on them while comparing the materials to her initial ideas. This is what she lived for, and to see her dive into her work was breathtaking. I wanted to be like that to carry that shine in my eyes as I fulfilled a part of my dream, like Mariah did when sketching, planning, or even here, in the shop, picking out materials. Her soul emanated outward, warming the hearts near her. I wanted to feel that. This, this is what it was like to be satisfied and doing what one loved. I yearned to feel that way when I finally got to do what I wanted, filmmaking. My heart swelled, a familiar ache slamming me as I watched her pay the cashier. Would that day ever come for me? My parents had gone as far as to find the idea silly and laughable. The stab of their reaction still made my heart and soul bleed. Not to mention the number of times my courage failed me, left me chained to the bench in the railway station. How awful to stop! just when one was that close to leaving and chasing after one's dream. Courage will follow. Kasturi's voice echoed through me. We were coming to her front stoop, and I recovered from my thoughts. She had hope in me, despite the secrets I kept from her. Perhaps her encouragement was all I would ever need. Thank you so much, Sharia. Mariah said, taking her things out of my bag and pulling me from my thoughts. I will be able to get some work done while everyone is out thanks to you. Mm, no problem. Frowning, I failed to hold on to the few reassuring thoughts I had. I better get going. Class will be starting soon. Nodding, we waved goodbye and grabbing my bike, I set out on the path I knew so well. With each gear shift, I felt like I was drowning further into the depths of an empty future. The only people happy about this path were my parents, who understood nothing of the dreams one had. They had not been witness to the glow of a soul living its dream, like Mariah. How could they ever understand? In bitter silence, I slid into my chair. Unzipping my bag, I froze. Blinking, I realized Mariah had left her diary back. I shuddered, a thought, creeping forward with excitement. I wonder what she writes in there with such passion. Shaking my head, I argued with myself. She left it there by mistake. It must have slipped out between the sketches. True, it's a bad habit to read other people's diaries. The other side of me chuckled, mocking my weakness against curiosity. I'll return it to her tomorrow, I nodded to myself, digging myself further into the hole of mischief. She surely only has some designs in there. Sure, agreed the other side of my mind. We don't even know if this is her personal journal. What harm would it be to read a page to confirm what she has left behind? If it is her personal diary, tomorrow is too long of a wait to return it to her, right? It was all I needed to break the last string keeping me from opening the diary. I flipped to a page, the ink and paper less worn than those before it. Huddling over it, I acted as if I were keeping my classmates from cheating off my test. My eyes widened as I read the words so elegantly scripted across the smooth paper. For some reason, I felt like writing today. It's been three months since I last sat down to write anything. 
But I experienced something interesting today, something so surreal I cannot help but feel it needs to be written down. Kasturi's neighbor and friend Shoria is the same guy from the railway station. What are the odds? He was standing motionless. I pulled away after finishing the entry. Leaning back in my chair, I stared down at her writing, the beauty of it recalling a horrid moment in my own life. Mariah had said she saw me at the station, but I had no idea I'd stood by while her things had fallen around her. I rubbed the side of my jaw, a phantom slap for the taboos I had, and was presently performing, stinging. Did Kasturi know about this? Not only about my failure to help her at the railway station, but about the emotional pain and fear Mariah was struggling with? My body tensed, and I made up my mind. I flipped to the first page, wanting to know more about the life Maria had run away from. She may be living her dream, but something was haunting her as much as my own failure to pursue my dreams was hurting me. I wanted to help her, much like she had started to help me recover my own resolve to pursue my dream of being a filmmaker. Maybe I could talk to Kasturi find a way for both of us to pull ourselves from this tar pit of despair. Oh my God. I couldn't believe I'd stood there and let all of Mariah's wonderful sketches blow away with the wind. How blind was I? If I had known, no, I should have snapped out of it, scrambled to help her like a decent person. Instead, I had walked away. How horrible. No wonder she was aggressive and abrasive, but I will make it right, Mariah, I thought to myself. If only you had said something to me sooner. No, you tried, but I was too ashamed to admit I had failed to chase after my dream to see what it was you were trying to say. I'm so sorry, Mariah, 23. Mariah's Diary Mumbai, I can't believe it. Mohit finally proposed. We've been together since college, and I was starting to wonder if this day would ever happen. And finally, when it happened, it was like a dream. He took me out on a date, and the chemistry was surreal before I even realized why we were there. The restaurant was amazing. I think the name of it was Tertulia. It was cute, intimate, and the food mind-blowing. I love the angles inside and the use of diff-errant furniture to make each section stand out. We left the restaurant holding hands, enjoying the shops we passed until we found ourselves in front of one of the arches at Chaida Bumi. The ocean breeze felt wonderful, and the lights on the sea link were surprisingly romantic. He said my name so soft, and when I turned from the railing, he was on one knee. My heart felt as if it was going to pop out of my chest. He held up a small box that was open to reveal a ring so beautiful it brought tears to my eyes. Before he could even finish asking, I was screaming yes. I fell down into his arms, kissing him over and over. We had dinner with my parents to celebrate landing my first independent project as an interior designer. They are proud of me for once. So many times I have faced their frowning faces when I brought up this dream, but now they aren't afraid to smile about it. I suppose they didn't want to see me get hurt if I failed while pursuing this dream. After all, I am their baby girl. Who can blame them? But yes, have I told you about my first official job as an interior designer? To be honest, Mohit did pull some strings to get me the job. He told me to consider it as a wedding gift. I have never been so happy. My dream is coming to life before me. My parents are proud of me for it, and I am marrying the love of my life. Mohit has helped me every step of the way, and I cannot be happier that I will soon become his wife. My parents are thrilled that he finally proposed. Tomorrow I meet the client and start living my dream. Tomorrow I will officially be Mohit's wife, my college sweetheart, the love of my life, my everything. I get to look forward to waking up to his smile every morning and hear the honeyed words fall from his loving lips day in and day out. 
My heart races at the thought. My wedding gown is magnificent. The design is a mixture of traditional Indian styling with the classic bride and white flair along with a matching headdress. I will look like a goddess when Mohit sees me in it. His smile will be one I cannot shake from my memory. My heart and soul will speak those vows, knowing we both have lived by them before this point and will always be true to one another for the rest of our lives. The idea of sharing his last name gives me a sense of completion, much like when my first client requested for me to come back for another job. This was my other dream. So many girls aren't as lucky as I am to be able to marry their college sweetheart. Oh, I must go and get ready for the dance rehearsal. I feel lost, confused even. Mohit, he doesn't smile anymore, not at me anyhow. Each time our eyes meet, he frowns and looks away. I don't understand it. I can't help but feel there's a huge amount of resentment in the way he's acting. Did I? Have I done something to make him feel that way? He stays out late after work. It could be he's overworking himself. I don't know. I've been so busy with all the jobs I'm handling. It feels like I am coming home to a stranger who looks like Mohit. He sighs a lot. His. Shoulders are heavy with the way he carries himself. I ask, what's wrong, Mohit? And I get a sharp, nothing, before he leaves the room. My gut churns with each wave of strange behavior. As his wife, I should be able to help him through this, through whatever is eating him up inside. But then that fearful thought keeps me tossing and turning at night that it might be me. I've made him unhappy, lost the ability to make him smile. He no longer tries to make me smile in the ways he did barely a year ago. This hurts, and I can't seem to stop it. Mohit is jealous. At first, I didn't see it. Those resentful looks were a mild precursor to the degrading and bitter words he spits at me now. I thought I had upset him somehow, but then it continued no matter how hard I tried to make him happy. Each time he lashes out in the direction of my career, the dream that he helped create is now a curse to him, and I am to blame. It's wrong. Where is the encouraging man I married? The college sweetheart who gifted me my very first foot in the door to reach my dream career? How happy we were at that time. He was so proud of me. Here I sit, years later, when I thought life would be enriching and rewarding. Instead, I am met with a forked-tongued doppelganger when I come home and worse when I wake every morning. I can't remember the last time I saw him smile. The only time I smile is while I am working but his double-edged words are starting to reach me even there. I can't give up on being an interior designer. I love my job, and my reputation is now known all over Mumbai, and I don't understand Mohit's jealousy. We are husband and wife. Everything we do is to make the other person proud. Why is he breaking me down after helping me reach this dream? I think I will ask him. We need to talk. We need to stop this merry-go-round of malicious words and constant abandonment. Today I found myself waiting here at the kitchen table. He was supposed to be home for dinner. I made his favorite, but it's cold now. Worse, he's not picking up his phone. Where did my beloved Mohit go? Fights. No more calm discussions. No more gentle talks. We fight every time one of us opens our mouth to the other. I feel like I've been caught in an explosion, shell-shocked. Today he asked me to quit my job. I was floored, insulted. When I pressed further, he demanded I settle down and have a child. It stung. Never have we discussed this before, even after marrying. I feel like this deep desire of his grew in his silence and is now bursting from him in a monstrous rage. It made me angry. How dare he demand I quit my job? Is this his way of taking me completely out of my dream career? This isn't what I wanted. I, I feel like he lifted me up like a trophy, and now that I've outgrown my shelf, 
he wants to throw me away. Replace me with something neither of us wanted in all the years we've been together. I don't understand. The words and the way he demands that I give up all that makes me who I am. My career, my future, everything. It's insulting and disrespectful. I am his wife. Yet somehow, I feel that he thinks I've outgrown him, that he wants me to fall silent now. It's cruel. But part of me is scared. Am I really going to keep my marriage in such a bitter place for the sake of self-respect? How can I justify which evil is the lesser one? Sacrificing my life or my marriage? Why is Mohit making me choose? Where did the love that he once held for me go? I haven't seen that man, my beloved, in those eyes for far too long. I can only pray that the fighting dissipates. If we talk this out, reveal our desires, I am sure we can find some middle ground. There are plenty of women in Mumbai who work and have children. Why is this not an option? Why does he twist his face with such rage when I even suggest this? I'm getting a divorce. An ugly word, it leaves an ugly sensation on my soul and heart. This was not what I wanted. But Mohit, he, Mohit slapped me. My cheek bruised, my very being still stings with the heaviness of it. It felt like a brick slamming into my left cheek. The pain shocking, I folded over, gripping the throbbing in my face, gasping in pain. Wide-eyed, tears fell across the sidewalk where we were. He was walking out the door. I chased after him, insisting I wanted to go with him to his friend's dinner party. He's been going to them a lot yet. Never naming who it is, and at times not coming home until morning. I, I couldn't watch him leave me alone in that cold, loveless house again. I grabbed his sleeve, pleading, Mohit, I'm going with you. I'm your wife. His palm smashed into my face, and as I was bent over in shock, I heard, his bitter hiss, as my wife, you need to learn your place. I heard his steps leave me there, broken and vulnerable. My heart aching, I knew I could not dare to stay another day in what used to be my home. Locking that door felt like I was locking my own cage. I can't tell you how long I sobbed with my forehead against my own door. The moment I stepped away, I knew my marriage would be over. By the time I made it to my parents, my cheek had swollen, the color a horrendous maroon turning purple. Never did I want to feel my husband's strength in this manner. The hands that had been so tender and gentle with me held out a ring to me with promises that he had now broken without guilt. My parents have given me their approval. I will be divorcing Mohit. My marriage, my wonderful love, are nothing more than shattered pieces on the ground at my feet. I've had it with love. It's a false and dreadful thing. It makes you feel safe, and when you need it the most, it abandons you. I will not let it betray me again, ever again. In fact, I've had it with being close to people. Divorcing Mohit has ripped away even people I thought were my friends. From here on, I will focus on my career. It's the only thing that hasn't bitten my hand. And writing, what good have you done me? I wrote to you, desperate for your help, your counsel, and you did nothing. This is the last time I give you the pleasure to sit there idly and watch my life fall apart. This story of my life ends here. No more love stories, no more tales of my achievements. I am content to live for myself and end the story written in this useless book. 24.